I'm Dan Ashley, the evening news anchor for ABC 7 News in San Francisco, and I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe, healthy, and comfortable during these very challenging times. I am also a proud board member of the Commonwealth Club, one of our most important Bay Area institutions. The club has been hosting wonderful events with exciting speakers and topics in the Bay Area for over a century. In times of crisis, good information and strong connections in our community are especially important. And during the current COVID-19 crisis, the club has really stepped up. Since March 6th, the club has brought you over 100 live streamed events with speakers and panelists, including past governors, secretaries of state, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, mayors, county supervisors, respected medical experts, the president of the University of California, experts on anxiety and happiness in times of stress, and many, many more. Every program includes a live chat. So you and viewers all over the Bay Area and beyond have been able to ask these experts the questions that are on your minds. Every program has been neutral and unbiased in true Commonwealth Club style to get to the bottom of the issues that are so drastically affecting our lives. The club has done all this public service despite being profoundly affected by the crisis. The inability to hold events for the past two months has forced the club to cut its budget and staffing by 50%. The remaining staff are working from home to bring the community these valuable and informative live streamed programs. The club needs your support to continue its shelter at home programming. Please make a tax deductible donation to the club now by texting the word donate to 329-4231. That is donate to 329-4231 or visit the Commonwealth Club website commonwealthclub.org. We need the club to be here in the months and years ahead to help inform and educate as we figure out how to get our society and our economy safely moving again. Consider changes to the way we live and work as a result of this crisis and take steps to prevent a future pandemic. Once again, please support the Commonwealth Club now by texting the word donate to 329-4231. That is donate to 329-4231 or visit the website commonwealthclub.org. I want to personally thank you for supporting one of our community's truly great organizations. I'll see you on ABC 7 News and at the Commonwealth Club. Stay safe. Good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California. Today's program and the club's new virtual efforts are generously supported by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative and a collaborative of local funders and donors. We are grateful for their support and hope others will follow their example to support the club during these uncertain times. I'm Michael Pappas, Executive Director of the San Francisco Interfaith Council. I'll be your moderator for today's program called Breaking Ground from Landmines to Grapevines. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker, Heidi Kuhn. I have been blessed to know Heidi now for three years. We first met on September 21st, 2017 at the uh, Interfaith Center at the Presidio of the Main Post Chapel on the occasion of the United Nations International Day of Peace, which also coincided with the 20th anniversary of Heidi's, the founding of Heidi's organization, Roots of Peace. Uh, we honored Heidi and we honored her organization, an incredible humanitarian, a remarkable person. Now it's my distinguished pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker, Heidi Kuhn. Heidi is a former reporter and producer at CNN. She's the founder and CEO of Roots of Peace, which has removed over 100,000 landmines and unexploded ordinances throughout the world, including Iraq, Israel, the West Bank, Croatia, and Afghanistan. And Roots of Peace has improved the lives of over a million farmers and family members. Heidi's numerous awards include the Alumni of the Year Award for Excellence and Achievement from UC Berkeley, and the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Award for outstanding public service benefiting local communities. 
Her Majesty Queen Noor of Jordan wrote the foreword for Heidi's latest book, Breaking Ground, From Landmines to Grapevines, One Woman's Mission to Heal the World. Would you please join me in welcoming our distinguished speaker and presenter of the day, Heidi Kuhn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael, for that very kind introduction. And, um, you know, life goes full circle. And I think in your position as uh, the distinguished executive director of San Francisco Interfaith, I always recall my Granny McNear's favorite words, coincidence is a miracle in which God prefers to remain anonymous. And there are certainly no accidents today because I have the Commonwealth Club to thank, not only for this presentation, but 20, almost 23 years ago, yeah, on September 21st, it was uh, 1997. And it was three weeks after the late Princess Diana had tragically died in the accident with her dear friend, uh, Dodi Al-Fayed. And the world was stunned. It was not only the uh, loss of a princess, but the compassion, that root word passion, the compassion she brought towards the issue of AIDS and the issue of landmines. And, and for some coincidental reason, the Commonwealth Club was expected to host a group that was touring um, uh, seven cities uh, to raise landmine awareness. And it was uh, Jerry White, Caleb Rossiter, Mary Wareham, and uh, General um, Robert Gard. And because the Commonwealth Club, for one reason or another, there was a uh, cancellation, I offered to host the event in the living room of my family home. And to see Jerry White walk into my home and take off his leg. I've seen people take off their shoes in a customary manner, but I've never seen somebody take off their leg to walk into my home. And it was a defining moment, a dear friend of mine introducing Jerry to speak, played candle in the wind. And I think our hearts were open to what change we may bring forth in the world, to, to change a world where we live today, where there's an estimated 60 million landmines silently poised in 60 countries. I'm a cancer survivor. My husband and, and four children were there in the room and I, I was holding a little boy, uh, my, my son Christian, uh, who was not even two years old. And when I was 30 years old, I was uh, diagnosed with malignant cancer. And I think anybody who's gone through cancer and under the knife, that defining moment when the anesthesia comes on, you look up and you make for me a prayer, dear God, grant me the gift of life and I will do something special with it. Well, that night on September 21st, 1997, when I host, was honored to host uh, the Commonwealth Club, um, uh, Max Thielen, people who, distinguished people in the community who are now gone, um, I raised my glass in a toast. May the world go from mines to vines. And the image of blood to wine, killing fields to vineyards made the room silent. And we thought, how do we take this toast out of the living room of my home? And it was an epiphany moment, Michael, for me, because um, it was um, cancer is a landmine. None of us know when we're quite going to step on it. And landmines are a cancer to the earth. And the solution was removal. So from the humble heart of a mother, I set out on quest for 23 years. Um, uh, just thinking of the vintners, California, we're so blessed during the harvest of hope to smell these beautiful grapevines to celebrate the gift of life and the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. Well, the fresh fruit in my part of the world is a fine bottle of wine, but in other parts of the world, it's fresh grapes and it's raisins. And so now today I've managed over a hundred million dollars under contract in Afghanistan. And I am now a CEO coordinating one of the most uh, challenging harvests with COVID-19 and, and the uptick in Afghanistan and trying to take these fresh grapes and raisins across contentious borders through Pakistan and, and speaking with our friends in Pakistan and our friends in India. You know, I approach this from a humanitarian heart. I'm a mother, takes eight pounds to detonate a landmine, the average weight of a newborn child. And if I can do something with the footsteps that I have been given, 
I've doubled my life, Michael. I'm 62 years young. And uh, let me share my story with you on a, on a short uh, PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared for all of you. So again, thank you so much to the Commonwealth Club for 23 years ago and um, today being July 1st, uh, coinciding again, the coincidence of Princess Diana's, uh, what would have been her 59th birthday uh, prior to her tragic death. And today I think it's important to look at this date and remind ourselves as global citizens, we are at the halfway par point of a year that began with great vision and great hope as we all think back where we were to celebrate New Year's 2020. I was in a minefield in Vietnam and um, a dear friend of mine, Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, President Emeritus, the World Food Prize, and a former Vietnam vet joined me to meet this young gentleman who lost his leg to a landmine. Today in Vietnam, millions of landmines, UXOs, and cluster munitions remain silently poised in the ground over, over years since the war ended when I was a junior in high school on April 30th, 1975. And again, um, it's our quest. So where did I get this spirit? And, and appropriately to speak to the Commonwealth Club who started with um, Small Roots, a group of uh, distinguished uh, local citizens wanting a better world uh, in 1903. So this is my great-great-grandfather, meet Captain John A. McNear. Our family came uh, from Scotland to Maine in 1701 and helped build the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, Samuel McNear rang the Liberty Bell um, uh, when the uh, Declaration of Independence was, was brought in. Uh, roots from Wiscasset, Maine uh, in uh, 1832, Captain John A. McNear was born there. And when he was in his 20s, he heard of gold in them hills. And as a young man set out to see to come to California in search of his fortune. Well, somehow he missed the boat. Now, I don't know what a young 20 year old was doing to miss the boat, but his earthly belongings uh, went around the Tierra del Fuego, the southern tip of uh, South America. So he set forth on an intrepid journey and went uh, through the Isthmus of Panama on horseback through uh, malaria-infested jungles and raging rivers and arrived on the Pacific Ocean. He took the old Sonora up to San Francisco, and when he arrived, only to find that his boat had sunk. So we have a family motto, don't curse the darkness, light a candle. And, and with humble beginnings, he moved up to Petaluma, California. Uh, uh, he had a brother who had been there already, and um, he realized he didn't have enough money to go to the Gold Hills. So he saw the opportunity there. Um, and uh, uh, the people were coming, needed a bank. So he started Bank of Sonoma. And then he realized because of their shipping experience over the years on the East Coast, that he needed to bring the eggs, milk, and butter to build an economy uh, into San Francisco. So he and the, uh, owned a steamer gold and um, brought transportation. They needed a place to live. He started real estate. And, and in a decade, he had, he had the means to purchase 2,500 acres in San Rafael on the eastern shores of Marin County. And um, uh, he was a self-made man, but, but one of of spirit and respect for good hard work. Um, I, I would like to say before leaving that, um, uh, when he heard of the Chinese, the challenges of uh, 1882 um, uh, was the Chinese Exclusion Act. He sailed to San Francisco and offered the Chinese safe refuge. And today it's called China Camp. 500 Chinese came starting a dried, thriving sh dried shrimp industry that, um, uh, you know, the people were, were self-reliant and the respect for the land and its people was ingrained to me throughout generations. Meet young Heidi Thomas Kuhn in uh, uh, 1975 before women were ever allowed in Rotary. They were called Rotary Anns. I had the honor and privilege of being an exchange student to Utsunomiya. And when I stayed with my Japanese families who only 30 years earlier had been enemies, brutal enemies during World War II, I, I saw that that, that healing among rivals could happen. And I came home the summer of my junior year, just two months after the Vietnam War ended, and I told my, my parents I wanted to go to Berkeley and get an education to do something about peace. 
I graduated in political economics of industrial societies and uh, met and married the love of my life, Gary Kuhn. Well, four children later, we launched Roots of Peace and it was at the World Trade Center in San Francisco. You'll see a beautiful uh, woman to the top left that uh, was my congresswoman who stood, sat next to me and whispered in my ear, I will be with you as long as it takes. Well, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi has graciously invited me not one, but two occasions when she stood by her children and grandchildren and put the gavel down as Speaker of the House. Thank you to my local roots and to thank you to those Jerry White, Robert, Robert Mueller, and uh, of course, to if I can share to the left, there's Mrs. Uh, Kofi Annan. And uh, uh, the Roots we just celebrated last week in San Francisco, the 75th anniversary of the signing of the United Nations Charter, June 25th, ni uh, 26, uh, 1945. And, and those roots of peace are, are needed now in our world more than ever. Uh, President um, uh, Roosevelt had envisioned uh, a United Nations his, he died before that vision could come to fruition, but on May 19th, my grandparents always taught me <laughs> that the original delegates of the United Nations gathered beneath mere woods and dubbed those as the temples of peace, these beautiful trees rising and, um, and what that represents. ABC um, Seven News. After I started Roots of Peace, to... the Minds to Vines vision, we had to turn that vision into reality. And you can see some of the most intrepid oh, uh, vintners uh, in the Napa Valley. To the upper right, uh, the late Robert Mondavi hosted the first fundraiser where uh, I didn't have a penny to my name and he uh, was gracious enough to uh, raise along with Margaret $30,000. I had money to go demine a field and another vintner stepped in, Mienko Gergich at the bottom. Mike Gergich in 1976 won the Paris tasting, sneaking a little bottle into Paris in the best noses in the world. He and Robert Mondavi helped bring the uh, Napa Valley to what it is today. From 1976, only 17 wineries, today over 400. And of course, uh, nothing would be um, what we're doing today in Afghanistan without the generous support of Diane Disney Miller, you can see uh, presenting a pennies for peace to Mrs. Kofi Annan. Uh, she is the owner of, was, uh, again, the late Diane Disney Miller, daughter of Walt Disney. Um, and uh, uh, I never knew uh, Michael who she was and, and uh, she volunteered in the basement of our home. She came every week and one day took me to lunch at Il Dabi Days in San Rafael and wrote a six figure check. And, and I said, Mrs. Miller, uh, she goes, you remind me of dad. And I said, Mrs. Miller, who was your dad? And she looked at me straight on and said, Walt Disney. And she said she had 330 no's, she told me, that her father had for, for a mouse that was going to change the world. Imagine going around and saying Mickey Mouse is going to change the world. 330 no's. She's always told me one day, turn your minds to vines, you will get out of the basement. And in basement, I did the beginning of the new year, uh, January 2000. Um, I had the honor and privilege of uh, taking my first footsteps in, in uh, the minefields of, of Croatia. It was shortly after the Balkan War and 1.2 million landmines were planted in the soil. The U.S. Department of State, I thank for matching those funds in the International Trust Fund out of uh, Slovenia. And um, where would I be without my Rotary experience? Uh, here is John Hoke, former president of Rotary San Francisco number no. two, where my grandfather was president in 1945 and uh, very proudly present uh, there at the signing of the UN Charter. Peace is in our blood, I like to say, and uh, it's so beautiful to have seen Croatia turn into uh, one of the top tourist destinations in the world within my lifetime. Uh, this is a, a beautiful photo because um, I took my daughter to a minefield on her 13th birthday, and growing up in Marin, she saw that the latest pair of blue jeans was not the goal um, into her teenage years. It was a rite of passage as mother and daughter. And um, she gathered with ABC News anchor Cheryl Jennings when I was invited to the studio. And the three of us went to lunch at Il Fernayo and talked about three women who had footsteps in a minefield. This was not your normal San Francisco conversation. And we coined that phrase at the table, the pent roots of peace, 
Pennies for Peace campaign. And um, I salute my dear daughter who has joined me in the minefields of the world and raised over 50 million American pennies for peace to build schools and soccer fields for children in Afghanistan, soccer fields in Angola. And you can see her with a big bright Amer uh, sunshine uh, there um, with a pinata that we brought to the children of Croatia. Um, this is my dear husband, Gary, um, love of my life, boy of my dreams for 44 years. Um, we've been married and um, we are here in the minefields of Angola. So uh, this is the exact place actually where the late princess Diana had walked in Huambo. And Roots of Peace partnered with the um, a Conservation International when we learned that the elephants could not walk the land uh, without, uh, they felt the thunder in the ground. And so they they infringed upon the food sources and, and ate the food. So the when villagers and, and you know, man and beast could live side by side, the villagers, of course, were shooting the elephants. Um, so we have set out on a path. Uh, this is featured in the book, and shortly after this photo was taken, a group of uh, 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 just a swarm of bees came, and we were told to freeze in that field and not move, for it was a minefield. It was one of the fri most frightening moments of my life. Um, we've moved on to Israel-Palestine, which I'll be telling you about later, and this is a little boy named Daniel Yuval, who stepped on a landmine uh, when he was playing in a rare snowball fight in the Golan. Together with Jerry White, we help bring forth unanimous legislation at the Knesset. Um, these are the fields of Bethlehem, and through the generous funding of Shirley and Paul Dean, owners of Spiritera Winery, again, Neil Davide, a six-figure check, helped bring forth the demining of the fields of Bethlehem. And it wasn't an easy project. I went back and forth uh, 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 probably about 20 times, you know, over the fence, over the wall, whatever you wanted to call it, we're humanitarian, I'm not political, but um, both sides knew exactly where I was going. And as you can see the lower left is into the office in Ramallah of uh, President Mahmoud Abbas and to the right, very proudly into the office of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu with a little boy who helped me change the world. The interfaith support, Michael, is so important because um, not only has Roots of Peace been blessed by His Holiness Pope Francis, but to the right is the Grand Mufti of the Golden Dome uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, when he heard about the work that we're doing in turning minds to vines, he presented me with his holy beads. He went to his desk and took them off and said, we are all the daughters and sons of Abraham. And after Roots of Peace was tragically attacked on March 28, 2014, in a four and a half hour Taliban attack, he was my first call that I got along with General John F. Campbell and said, the entire Muslim world is behind you. Please, Mrs. Kuhn, do not give up. To the lower left is Cardinal Peter Turkson standing at the gates of the Qasr al Yahud, the baptismal site of Jesus. We walked through there together where seven monasteries uh, uh, were heavily mined along the Jordan River. Can you imagine where three faiths converge? Michael, not only where Jesus was baptized by John, it was the, uh, the field uh, where the sacred land where Muhammad once walked and where Elijah rose to heaven. So the Israelites crossed over over that same river uh, into Canaan. And you can ima imagine the poetic words that Her Majesty Queen Noor wrote in the foreword of my book. Um, uh, we, again, we are all daughters and sons of Abraham, and we must find a way to get back to the garden. Uh, Gandhi Global Family Award, again, another interfaith award. I uh, it was 150th anniversary of Mah Mahatma Gandhi. Um, I love this quote, uh, the day the power of love overrules the love of power the world will know peace. And I was honored, deeply humbled and honored to be the first American to be presented this award again on the 150th anniversary of his assassination on October uh, 2nd, 2019. Afghanistan, we're gonna talk a lot about uh, this later in the video, but um, after September 11th attacks, um, we learned about Afghanistan, but it's not a country of Tora Bora and caves. It's one of the most fertile lands where if you dug a hole through uh, where I'm living here today, um, uh, you wouldn't end up in China 
China, you'd end up in Afghanistan. So it's the fertile grounds of, of the San Joaquin Valley. It was once dubbed the Garden of Central Asia. And I took this picture with the women as we were teaching them to harvest uh, the grapes. And, and it was with the support of their husbands. They worked early in the morning and we helped through Roots of Peace and funding from USAID to plant over 5 million fruit trees in all 34 provinces, uh, impacting over 1 million farmers and families. Minds to vines, dreams into reality. But there are no dreams into reality for the most heavily mined country in the world is Afghanistan. And to the upper right, ABC News anchor Cheryl Jennings joined me in the minefields of uh, Afghanistan on two occasions. Uh, once in 2005, and the photo above with my husband with our flak jackets was 2015. We all had to take separate cars in case of a car bombing, but we felt, um, you know, it was um, our footsteps were worthy and, and um, so great grateful to be here today. You can see the photo at the bottom. All, all the gentlemen, uh, including the little boy, had lost limbs to landmines. Again, Roots of Peace is working very closely with um, the Afghan government. And uh, to the, on April 4th, 2018, I was invited to um, uh, by, by uh, Abdullah Abdullah to see these families come in without limbs. So there is a sense to whom much has been given, much is expected. Peace through agriculture is our battle cry. Of course, uh, uh, I, I, I take that quote to Ambassador uh, Kenneth Quinn, but um, turning minds to vines and creating fertile grounds for peace. Alternative agricultural crops to uh, poppies. Average Afghan farmer makes $800 wheat, 1,200 pounds poppies, $4,000 growing fresh grapes. So it, it uh, blasts the argument that um, all those Afghans only can grow poppies. Well, not true. Provide, give a man, teach a man to fish, teach a woman to farm. And here are the women, over 5,000 women we've trained. We're going to train more. And sitting there was one of my happiest days with these women and training them in modern agricultural techniques. You know, as um, I talked with uh, Reed Lore and um, John Haydu, our, our current uh, chief of parties, you know, we go into the, the, the battlegrounds for peace. We're not one to shy away. And in 2014, uh, again, after the attack of the Taliban, um, you know, it was a defining moment for me as to whether, you know, it just has gotten way too tough. It's time to stay in my Marin County home, get back to the tennis courts and, and give this up. Well, with funding from USAID and our CHAMP program, which is the acronym for Commercial Horticultural Agricultural Marketing Program, a mouthful, um, uh, we have uh, helped to take Afghan exports, as you can see from 2014, to an average of $250 million to over $1.4 billion, and we're just getting started. Again, began the first uh, day of this new uh, decade, 2020, in the minefields of Vietnam, and then went on to China, where Frank Yi, a former, uh, who was the, one of the founders of the Silicon Valley um, uh, Semiconductor, uh, heard of my work in Vietnam. And again, uh, Roots of Peace transcends governments. Frank gave me a very generous check for 1 million Chinese RMB to remove the minefields, the landmines in Quang Tri province, uh, the former DMZ. Again, today, 45 years after the war ended, millions of landmines, UXOs, and cluster munitions remain buried in the ground. And since the war ended, 40, over 100,000 innocent Vietnamese footsteps have been maimed or killed by landmines. This next month, we're in the month, actually. Uh, uh, the, the 12th of July uh, marked uh, the uh, 25th anniversary when President uh, Bill Clinton brought forth the U.S.-Vietnamese uh, relations. Um, and, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate that friendship than getting all the landmines out of Vietnam. This is a little boy who uh, picked up a rock. He, um, uh, he thought he was fixing his bike was a cluster mission. It blew off his left arm and face. And I'm standing there holding the hand of his mother. Uh, the Vietnamese people, I just can't tell you what forgiving people they are. And, um, you know, I knew in my heart, it's probably a, a munition that was left behind by an American. But, um, you know, we met each other at the beginning of this year. Uh, her son had died from his injuries, but the tears of two mothers, Afghan, I'm sorry, Vietnamese and American, 
um, our tears melted together, and I will continue my quest to raise $20 million by the end of 2020 with a very clear vision to eradicate all landmines, UXOs, and cluster munitions in, in the former um, DMZ of Vietnam. When I was a student at Berkeley in 1970s, that was my war. And this is something I can do about do to create peace and love. This is my dear friend, Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, again, uh, standing uh, the Bin Lin tunnels, which were built um, to when the bombs were, were dropping, those are bombs over our shoulders. And, and together um, uh, on my birthday, January 6th, I was celebrating again my 62nd birthday having survived cancer. Together with Ambassador Quinn, we put our thumbs on that, that button and detonated a landmine and it was just a horrific blast, you know, and, and it's exciting at first to hear it. And then if you think it's so bittersweet, because that could have been a child, it could have been a farmer. And it just reminded me how much more work I have to do. And um, this is a joyful moment, um, peace, peace, the economics of peace. This is my dear friend, uh, uh, Morten Gottelf. He's uh, 85 years young. And he um, also uh, had something to do with the Vietnam War. He was a pilot flying the, uh, uh, our, Vietnamese, our American soldiers in and those who were injured out. And he too said, what can I do as part of corporate social responsibility to make a difference? Well, I can hold up this bottle of uh, Morton Bassett Black Black pepper, the best black pepper in the world. And you can see, I hope, on the back, the logo of Roots of Peace, which is the same one over my shoulders. He is sourcing every single um, bit of black pepper from the former battlefields of Vietnam. Uh, it is the best black pepper in the world, and he is striving to give the world a taste of peace. Uh, this month, the pepper will be sold in all supermarkets throughout the United States of America. That's my way of celebrating the 4th of July. And this is my book, Breaking Ground. I hope you're able to uh, purchase it on Amazon. And again, always giving a, a shout to uh, local bookstores, uh, uh, Book Passage, Elaine Petricelli, uh, her uh, in San Francisco, Marin County, it's available. Uh, please order it. It's a, it's a very uh, truthful story at a time, I think, bringing hope to the world, uh, vision into reality. And as we begin this uh, 4th of July weekend, uh, the American dream is live and well. So, um, so with that, um, it all starts with solid roots. And um, I say thank you, Tasha Kaur, come on. And uh, over to you, Michael. And this is one of my very beautiful friends in Afghanistan. We need to see the world more with friendship and light and uh, certainly praying for all of them as they are suffering COVID-19. And I'm coordinating a harvest of hope. Thank you, dear Heidi Kuhn, founder and CEO of Roots of Peace. A reminder, this is a Commonwealth Club of California program called Breaking Ground from Landmines to Grapevines. Now it's time for the question and answer period. Please submit your questions via chat. Um, I'd like to, to start, Heidi. I mean, the, this was an overwhelming presentation. I mean, 23 years of humanitarian aid work uh, and really saving lives. Uh, you've seen a lot in the time that you've uh, endeavored in, in this incredible work. I'm just wondering, in this season of COVID-19, you raised, you said you had some challenges. Can you tell us about the challenges of doing your work in the midst of the COVID? Oh, well, Michael, um, not only are our, our, our challenges on, on the home front, you know, I have four children and they've all grown up. So uh, my oldest son, uh, Dr. Brooks Kuhn, is a pulmonary cardiologist. He works in ICU at UC Davis, and uh, he is the one responsible for intubating uh, the COVID-19 patients. And when I spoke to him yesterday, it's on the uptick. Um, uh, and he told me he had 20 patients and, and uh, mom, I, I intubated too last night and please please wear your mask you and dad stay home so you know I'm managing roots of peace worldwide a humanitarian nonprofit from our home front and and praying for our children um, our four children around the world and the children of um, 
of, of, of the world. And, and as we address that, um, this morning I had uh, my real life <laughs> uh, situation. I had a conference call with uh, Afghanistan and our team. We now have uh, over 250 employees in Afghanistan. I'm coordinating a harvest of hope. So those beautiful, it took 10 years for those trees to bear fruit. We're coordinating the harvest down in Kandahar and Helmand province. These are heavily um, Taliban territories, but but people have to feed their children. And, and Roots of Peace is in the belly of the beast, not for politics, but bringing those fresh fruits to new markets to double and triple their income to poppies and, 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 and just the fruit of, of life and to feed the children. So, so the um, pomegranates and, and um, uh, melons are, are in, in those two areas. As we move up in the, con- in the country, Ghazni, Wardok, and Logar, uh, it's the apples and apricots and, and almonds. And then uh, north of Kabul, just like the Napa Valley, is what's called the Shamali Plains. And the most beautiful fresh grapes grow in this region. And um, so, so the challenges I faced real time today is that the borders between Pakistan and, and uh, Afghanistan uh, are closed. They closed today between Torkan and Spinbaldak. And uh, I am very proud to be working with the Pakistan, Pakistan government. I've had the honor of celebrating New Year's there in 2017 with a dear friend of mine, Shahid Khan, uh, at the invitation of the prime minister. So again, put the politics aside. We need to open those borders to get those fresh fruits to new markets. Um, they're desperate. They put uh, the, the fruits on the cargo planes because of COVID-19. Not many people are flying. The flights are limited, just like they are here in the United States. So they became innovative. And rather than just filling the, the belly of the cargo plane, they decided to fill the seats, the empty seats on the plane. Oh. And I learned today that when the plane took off, all, all the fruit rolled back. Oh, goodness. And they lost the harvest. So these are things we, we don't even imagine in San Rafael, California. Can't even imagine. So so that's my morning. And I'm going to work so hard with the Afghan government, with the, with the uh, uh, Pakistan government, and with the Indian government, because these fresh fruits are going to new markets in India. And uh, with food security and, and the challenges that we are now going to face to feed India, which will be the third largest economy in the world in, a, in another. Uh, another year. Um, you have to feed those people. And what better way to com- connect, as I learned at Berkeley, supply and demand. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to close borders and not create um, access to these new markets, and, and nature doesn't wait for COVID-19. I am managing a harvest of hope, and it is my responsibility as CEO to get those fresh fruits safely packed in corrugated boxes, and um, we'll share a video uh, with you um, later in that regard. Um, uh, so first, maybe I will take you to another Muslim uh, country uh, where we've worked in Palestine and West Bank, and you can't work there without the full support of the Israeli government. And I'm very proud to have brought three faiths together um, uh, and on, on one plot of land. And I think we all know it. It's called Bethlehem, but it's not your typical a, a little town of Bethlehem. Um, a dear friend of mine, uh, uh, Noah Griffin, many people may know very mm-hmm. fondly within the uh, uh, Commonwealth Club community, but he's he's so beautiful with lyrics. And one day he, he got the um, a beautiful song, uh, re, re, uh, the lyrics, if I can remember it. Let's see. A little town of Bethlehem, how dare we not de mine, embedded deep the landmine sleep, the scourge of humankind. Yet in the darkness shineth the everlasting light. The hope through fears supplant the fears. We lead with faith not and light. So something like that. Noah will bust me later, but <laughs> it was very heart touching. So with that, let's roll with, um, again, ABC7 News anchor Cheryl Jennings. I, I thank her so much for her courage to walk the minefields of the world with me, not only in Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine, and Vietnam. That's her short stories, Emmy award-winning stories are available on our website. But when they ask us our blood type before we walk into a minefield, you know for darn sure that this is real.
Humanitarian organization has made a historic mission to the Middle East to honor a little boy's request. That child lost a leg to a landmine in Israel. And his wish to free the world from landmines started a movement. It ended with Israelis and Palestinians working together in the fields of Bethlehem. ABC 7 News anchor Cheryl Jennings has this story. This little boy doesn't realize just how dangerous this path is. He's taking a shortcut through an old minefield in his village in the fields of Bethlehem. This young boy, Daniel Yuval, started a campaign to get rid of landmines. He won the attention of a California mother who runs a nonprofit to remove landmines. What happened is making history. Israelis and Palestinians working together to remove old landmines, turning this deadly field into this, a land filled with opportunities. Mines killed nearly half a dozen children here and many adults. But the Marin County Humanitarian Organization Roots of Peace stepped in to get rid of the mines. They provided this video. This is an uh, anti-personal mine. Those are parts which we took out from the minefield. The founder of Roots of Peace, Heidi yes, Kuhn, yeah. delicately negotiated a historic partnership between Israelis and Palestinians. Which allowed us, Roots of Peace, to be the first ever humanitarian demining organization in the Middle East, helping bring forth food security and jobs. And as we remove these landmines from the earth, we pray that the children may walk safely and shepherds may tend to their sheep. The villagers are extremely grateful to Heidi, a California mother of four, who answered the call of young Daniel Yuval. His right leg was blown off by a landmine in Israel's Golan Heights in February 2010. He was playing in the snow with his brothers and sisters. They didn't know it was a minefield. He was only 11. What did he say to you? He asked me, as a mother, if I could help him create a mine-free world. How many years did it take you? It took three years. San Francisco Israeli Consul General Dr. Andy David provided immense support. It's just to prove that Israelis and Palestinians can work together, can uh, bring peace together. Daniel and his family came with Heidi Kuhn to visit ABC7 just a few months after he convinced Israel's government to pass a bill to ban landmines that aren't needed for defense. Daniel partnered with Heidi and Nobel Peace Prize winner Jerry White in that effort. Jerry also lost a leg to a landmine near the same area as Daniel. The money for the project came from Napa Valley Vintners Paul and Shirley Dean, who donated $500,000. Heidi flew between California and Israel more than half a dozen times. She met with top leaders, including Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, and religious leaders. She persuaded a retired Israeli army colonel and a Palestinian mother of four to team up for this project. We look to see the Israeli children and Palestinian children playing in the, the lands without mines. And Heidi met with the leader of the Catholic Church in Jerusalem, who gave her the first ever peace medal in the church's history to honor her life-saving work in the name of a young hero, young Daniel Yuval. This little boy helped change the face not only of his nation, but across borders all over the world, and we are well on track to helping him achieve his dream for a mind-free world. Cheryl Jennings, ABC 7 News. Heidi, watching that video um, and seeing the piece work you're doing reminds me of uh, the famous Swiss Catholic theologian Hans Kuhn, who said, until there is peace step. among religions, there can't be peace among nations. And you have been that wonderful ambassador to bring people of different faiths together. And uh, for this, I know that God is smiling on you. Uh, in, in, in God's many different manifestations and names uh, by peoples of different parts of the world. I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, today's July 1st. Uh, the opening of your book begins with, coincidence is a miracle in which God prefers to remain anonymous. July 1st is Princess Diana's birthday. Uh, today, she would have been 59 years old my age, uh, what would you think she would think of your Minds to Vines initiative today? 
Well, I hope she would be proud. And uh, I hope her son would be proud, both of her sons, uh, because uh, three weeks prior to her tragic death, she had the courage to walk through the minefields of Bosnia-Herzegovina and uh, to, to really bring the human face to, to something we have control of. You know, as Michael, you know, it's not the parable of the seed <laughs> and to, to leave landmines buried to the ground and be so blind as human beings to walk away. That land is fertile. And as the population increases around the world, each mine out is a seed that I can plant and, and, and a farmer can plant because my business model is to put myself out of business. If I have a dream, it would be a world without landmines. And her son, uh, uh, Prince Harry, had graciously, uh, with MAG and the Halo Trust, invited me to Kensington Palace in April 2017. And he called forth a mine-free world by 2025. Well, he and his lovely wife, Megan, and young son have just moved to California. And I hope this message through the Calif uh, Commonwealth Club of California gets to his ears because we are here to help him as one mother to one child and, and passing that torch forward. And I hope this book makes people realize that no, no deed is too small, no effort. And, and despite the many, many obstacles, those coincidences along the way will meet you in places you never could have expected. You know, Michael, just a year ago um, uh, in May of uh, 2019, uh, two lovely women, uh, Anne and Benning and, um, and Elizabeth, they are the founders of the uh, Healing Summit um, uh, in the shores of southern Portugal. And I had met them at the United Nations, and they invited me to be one of the keynote speakers. And I paused and I thought, what, what am I going to do at a healing summit I'm talking about landmines? But you know what? We introduced with Roots of Peace to the United Nations environmental program. Landmines are an environmental concern. They also are uh, uh, climate change affects landmines because when you get tsunamis, uh, you know, onto the shores of Sri Lanka, you know, those those check marks where people knew safely where to walk are washed away. And and in Vietnam today, when you have the, the mud, they become virtual minefields that roll along the river. So so um, when I was I went and I took my dear daughter, whose birthday is May first, and um, so she met me and. I gave a passionate speech and, and how Diana, you know, her passing was such a, a moment of inspiration in my life. And then shortly after that, um, a beautiful woman, a tall, stately, elegant woman, Arab and, and Scandinavian, walked over to our table. We were sitting beneath a lemon tree, just a mother daughter, kind of just southern shores of Portugal. And um, she came over and said, may I have lunch with you? I heard your presentation. And um, she said, I don't know how to say this to you. My brother also died in that car accident with Diana. I'm Jasmine Al-Fayed, and my brother was Dodi. And after we hugged with tears, uh, she told me the story of her last summer uh, when she was with, uh, her brother had invited her on the yacht with um, Diana's two young boys. And they just had good fun as teenagers and eating pizza and, you know, probably ducking the paparazzi, I'm sure. And uh, uh, Diana was very gracious, she said, and asked her as a young 16 year old, what do you want to be when you grow up? And uh, she, she told her, I want to be a fashion designer. And, and Diana encouraged her. Well, the vacation was over and, you know, they were preparing to go back home to their respective families. And there was a package with a big bow presented to Jasmine. And it was the Versace off the shoulder dress that Diana famously wore. Um, and she presented it to that young 16 year old. Well, Jasmine told me she was just elated. And uh, sadly and tragically, just a week later, Versace was killed. And a month later, both Dodi and Diana was gone. So we're gone. So, so she folded that beautiful blue dress like a flag, she told me, and tucked it under her bed. And when we met beneath the lemon trees, we both decided to turn lemons into lemonade. She donated the dress for the Roots of Peace Minds to Vines exhibit at the Leonardo Museum 
in Salt Lake City, coinciding with the UN 68th Civil Society Conference and uh, uh, on the anniversary of their death in, in uh, August last year, we cut the ribbon and opened this beautiful exhibit. And uh, today that dress, a uh, beautiful blue dress is juxt juxtaposed with a halo truss of beautiful um, uh, blue landmine gear that she wore into the minefields of Angola. Um, of course, the Leonardo Museum is closed now due to COVID-19, but I cannot thank Jasmine enough for entrusting me with Diana's dress and to continue to tell this story of the importance of the eradication of all landmines from the face of this earth for the sake of the children to walk and the farmers to farm their fields. Well, thank you. And I think you've answered one of the questions of our attendees and uh, online. Did Heidi ever work with Princess Diana in her endeavors to eradicate world of landmines? In, in spirit. <laughs> in spirit. In, in spirit. spirit. In spirit. <laughs> I, have to, I have to tell you, I was very touched to see our mutual friend, Andy David, on the uh, uh, ambassador, Andy David, on the uh, yeah. What, on your on your uh, Cheryl Jennings tape because he's the one who introduced us and and the rest has been history. And, uh, I, when I look at the when I look at the uh, title of your book, the last part says one woman's mission to heal the world, to repair the world in Hebrew is tikkun olam, and and you are doing that uh, with grace and love and conviction and resolution. Uh, I wanted to. To move over and just ask you, three California vintners, you've, you've mentioned them by name, joined you in Canada to witness the signing of the Ottawa Treaty, Treaty to Ban Landmines. Mm -hmm. And as well as, and Speaker Nancy Pelosi joined you with Mrs. Kofi Annan to launch Roots of Peace at the World Trade Club in San Francisco. Tell us about these initial days of turning ideas into reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, it, it could have been just a beautiful minds to vines toast in the living room of my home. But, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I think the book is to inspire others to take those intrepid, bold footsteps, you know, and, and dream beyond what you think you are capable of. And, uh, you know, just uh, trusting in my intuition on that deep, deep, uh, meaningful moment of turning those fields into bountiful vineyards. I had a two-year-old. Uh, my children were in school. They were eight, 10, and 12. And uh, so, you know, there were logistics here. I mean, it's a factual book. And um, I went up to Napa Valley, knocked at the door of Robert Mondavi, and, and he opened. And, and really, the rest is history. And I have um, Eric Wente, again, another um, uh, wonderful supporter of the Commonwealth Club. Uh, he joined me, California Vintner from Liv Livermore. Tor Kenward, he was the senior vice president of Behringer at the time. And um, uh, uh, Robert Mondavi sent his Canadian representative. And I didn't have a penny to my name in December of 1997. But those people who were in the living room of my home won the Nobel Peace Prize. And then the Ottawa Treaty to ban landmines was signed. 164 nations signed it. Uh, the United States did, did not and has not. Um, but again, Roots of Peace is a humanitarian, not a political uh, uh, organization, and I will take the footsteps of my life to eradicate as many minds as I can from the face of the earth. So, um, you know, I thank the United States for, for matching those uh, funds. Uh, they, they've um, contributed, I believe, over $3 billion in uh, mine removal around the world, but we have a ways to go. Um, uh, we have a ways to go. Uh, there were some decisions earlier this year, Dece uh, January 31st, um, to change policy. But again, um, that's not my minefield. But um, let's let's encourage some people of the importance in the business aspect. This is a business deal. This is about trade and business because if we get these mines out instead of make them, we've got we've got the world. We have trade opportunities, and those benefit. When you have trade opportunities, you're going to have peace in those fields of Afghanistan. You know, I'm I'm in the middle of the um, you know the harvest, right? And we're having peace talks peace treaties, but you got to do the peace. You know, once the, once the ink is dried, you got to do the peace. And that's why we're in these conflict and post-conflict areas, you know, face on leading with um, 
the, turning the, the, the swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks so that nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So um, with that, uh, respecting the seeds we have in common rather than those which separate us, Michael, may I take you on another ABC journey to Afghanistan? I was going to ask you only because of my personal interest with your work with the Muslim community in Afghanistan. Uh, I would love for you to share the impact of your program uh, on Taliban uh, peace treaties. And yes, yes. It's important work. It's critically important work. You know, a year from now, we may not have the opportunity to put this genie back in the bottle. But I think and I believe that uh, Roots of Peace is a humanitarian nonprofit that skiff in the ocean, um, uh, supported by USAID, DOD, European Union, Asian Development Bank, and a new contract we just signed with the State Department and UNDP, working in remote regions that people in Marin County don't know in cocktail party conversations called Baglis and, and Fada and uh, Nangahar. But we're there to help the farmers um, check the religion at the door, check the politics. Uh, you know, I think always as we remove the demine, uh, not only the soil, we have to demine the soul and, and demine the hatred in our minds. But we just can't leave those vacant. We need to fill it with love and, and, and with heart. And when you plant a seed today, uh, with sunlight, water, and the human hand, it will grow as it has for thousands of years. So thank you to dear Cheryl Jennings, ABC, former ABC News anchor for over 30 years, um, a woman of grace and substance uh, for joining me in the minefields of Afghanistan. So let's go there. 2015, a year after um, we came back after a Taliban attack. We're here for the people and we're here. You know, the Taliban has to feed their children too, right? So we don't judge. We just uh, turn, turn swords into plowshares, guns into shovels. Transform the economy of Afghanistan tonight. ABC 7 News anchor Cheryl Jennings had the exclusive opportunity to see their work firsthand, and she is here to tell us more about yeah. that. I saw a very exciting yeah. President Ashraf Ghani says that he wants Afghanistan to be an exporting machine and believes the San Rafael based charity Roots of Peace is helping to provide the tools to be a game changer for his country with the help of U.S. aid. It's a reborn love. People are re-engaging with their country. Afghanistan's new president, Ashraf Ghani, met recently with Roots of Peace founders Heidi and Gary Kuhn and me to talk about moving his country's economy from aid to trade. I want to thank Roots of Peace for their initiatives and I'd be very encouraging of scaling up the effort. Roots of Peace is eager to expand its work with farmers and traders so they can stand on their own. I saw their pilot project in 2005 during my first visit to Afghanistan when Roots of Peace was removing landmines and helping starving farmers grow food for their families. Now, thanks to long-term funding from USAID, a major transformation is underway to improve the agricultural economy. The new president told me that it is crucial for the world to help Afghanistan create jobs because jobs can be a powerful weapon to fight the drug trade and terrorism. The image of a number of small drug runners is not the image of the majority of the people. It's the type of threats that have congregated around our neighborhood or threats to the entire system of government. In spite of those threats, Afghanistan is a country on the move, finally, after decades of war. It's present day Kabul at night, the fifth fastest growing city in the world. That's progress, that's success, and that could only happen with a coalition of the security that is provided. General John Campbell leads the NATO mission in Afghanistan. He talked with me at the military base in Kabul about the important contributions by Roots of Peace. Um, but their dedication, their passion, their energy for uh, the Afghan people is, is pretty remarkable. The Roots of Peace clearly is a, um, have shown that they're dedicated to development here, and they have some very impressive results. Bill Hammack is the head of the USAID mission in Afghanistan, the largest in the world. They've been funding our programs and supporting our efforts. Uh, they've been a huge supporter of us, which is great. It's enabled us to do many good things in this country. Hammock and his team met with the Cunes in Afghanistan to talk about President Ghani's goal. Drive the agricultural economy faster. Link more farmers and more traders to international markets. We've seen a shift now whereby farmers are actually making money. And there's a, a growing number of Afghan traders 
that are helping out. The Roots of Peace team producing those impressive results includes experts in science and business. We've gone from market demand to identifying the types of, of product that buyers want and then working backwards and saying, this is a product that you should be growing and this is how you should take care of that product. Proper irrigation is important, thinning is important, uh, fertilizer and... Ahmad Shah trains farmers on ways to grow the best grapes and pomegranates. He says it took time to convince the farmers to try new ideas. They were fighting with us. Why you are disturbing our, our wines? <laughs> this is from my mother, this is from my father. We have taken farmers to international expositions, uh, international markets, to meet with the buyers in those markets. They needed to understand the big picture. We've gone from what are basically wholesale markets to directly selling to supermarket chains. Those aspects they would classify as being game-changing. Millions of dollars of deals are starting to happen thanks to that partnership with USAID. And now President Ghani has jumped in and is already promoting Afghanistan's produce. Without the sons and daughters of farmers, believing that they can be presidents, ministers, entrepreneurs, we will not have a prosperous country. And tomorrow night we're going to hear from President Ghani again on why he is asking Silicon Valley to help him rebuild his country. His trusted advisor in San Jose is working on those connections and they both say the opportunities are only limited by our imaginations. President Ghani seems very progressive. Absolutely. Looking. He wants to get this done right then Great. now. Yeah. Thanks, Our Cheryl. Winter. I'm going to ask you to elaborate a little bit on this, if, if it's okay, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl uh, <laughs> Heidi. Uh, following September, the September 11th attack on the United States, that's when you began your work in Afghanistan. You expanded your Minds to Vines initiative beyond wine into growing. Can you talk a little bit about that and what, what has kept you going uh, in that direction? Because I think it's a, it's a lesson for all of us. Well, Michael, thank you for that question. I think that the simple answer is my family. My family kept me going and without an incredibly supportive husband. You know, my husband Gary was for 10 years at IBM and he went over for a little startup company called Adobe Systems with John Warnock and Chuck Geschke. And uh, this was the uh, 1990s, right? Early 1990s. And I remember that spirit of innovation in the Silicon Valley. And Gary was uh, working with John and Chuck on uh, uh, coming up with a new name for a new product. They had to connect to two systems and they had a long way to fall if they embarrassed themselves in front of the world. And uh, I remember, you know, hearing that epiphany moment, let's call it Acrobat. So you may have heard of Adobe Acrobat and my dear husband was on the front line um, as the business genius for that. So, you know, working in the basement of my home for five years, just with an idea, you know, mother of four children and, uh, you know, certainly a, a graduate of Berkeley and former CNN reporter and, and uh, producer providing stories for them was my own company, Newslink International. But, um, you know, uh, I couldn't have done this. I was working, my finances were in a shoebox and it took my dear husband Gary and and my my four children who in all ways um, uh, Brooks is a healer Tucker my son uh, went to to Vietnam for three years and started our Vietnam program Kylie and Christian have both walked the minefields of the world with me and so Gary went with me uh, to to UC Davis and one of the best viticultural schools in the world and uh, we approached them and said uh, we'd like to turn minds to vines in in Afghanistan, and we learned some incredible stories that uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Harold Olmo, O-L-M-O, -O, in the 1940s was the original Indiana Jones, and he went on horseback throughout Afghanistan, you know, putting the, the grape varietals, 70 varietals of grapes originated in Afghanistan, and he created a living library there. So we approached them and said, let's turn mines to vines there, because uh, the Taliban had burned those fields and then mined them on top. So uh, what Roots of Peace did is we partnered uh, in 2002 uh, 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 with United Nations Mine Action Service and implemented by the Halo Trust to remove those mines in the Shamali Plains north of Kabul. And then introduce the trellis vines, you know, the posts that lift the vine as we see so beautifully in Napa Valley. Well, the first year they cut those uh 
wooden post down. And when I asked them, why, why did you not trust us? And they said, Mrs. Kuhn, it was the coldest winter on record. If we didn't burn the wood, we wouldn't be here. We had to feed our families and stay warm. So I learned very quickly an American Mm -hmm. lesson to listen, just as we have to do now to listen to Black Lives Matter. We need to listen more. And so we went over there with another model, and that was the cement trellis post that my father gave me the idea. Again, the McNear family roots. We owned a brick and block company. still own it. Uh, The family does, and uh, McNear's brick and block. But we did the uh, cement trellis post. And so it took a whole family. It really took a village. And that is now the Afghan farmers own those businesses, uh, the trellis posts, and it's actually a legacy. Uh, The trellis vines literally lifted Afghanistan, a country that's actually shaped like a leaf. So what we're doing is turning over a new leaf for Afghanistan. I'm not giving up on these wonderful Afghan farmers and friends. And again, thank you to my dear family uh, for supporting the vision of their mom and sharing their mom with the world. I I think that you have uh, spawned other seeds as well, and that's your children. Uh, And and thank you. I'm not going to sleep tonight if I don't uh, answer one of our our questions from uh, from our attendees. It's a more technical question. For removal of landmines, did Roots of Peace hire the removal experts? What kind of training and protective equipment was needed? Yes. Okay. Let me be very clear about that. The passion that brought me through this was knowing we live in a world today with an estimated 60 million landmines silently poised in 60 countries. So Mines to Vines has been and always will be the vision in this American mother's heart. Um, It's grown to an organization now. And what Roots of Peace, a 501c3 nonprofit, does We train the farmers, we train the trainer, and now with funding, new funding from USAID, we're providing exports to new markets to, again, provide, uh, have that go back. It's, It's a value chain. So Roots of Peace contracts with the Halo Trust, with MAG, Mines Advisory Group, with Norwegian People's Aid, with Quadro, with with Cromac in Croatia. We never want to get into the demining. We leave that for the professionals. I've been there in minefields. I've detonated landmines. I have the deepest respect for the professionals. And when we raise those funds, in in the case of Diane Disney Miller's funds, it was $200,000. We gave every single penny through... United Nations Mine Action Authority and 100% of those pennies went to the Halo Trust because you got to get the mines out. Roots of Peace, 90% comes in because because many of these demining organizations just taken out landmines and walk, walked away. Well, that transfer of knowledge from grandfather to father and son is lost to war. And so if you create economic viability, the business of peace for young people, then that is a recipe for peace all over the world. People don't want to be jobless. They want to have that beautiful feeling of planting of seeds, smelling the harvest of grapes, and knowing they don't have to harvest them on midday on burlap sacks and drag them to market, hoping to get a meager profit, that you can put those in can, uh, containers, uh, corrugated boxes. And through funding from Roots uh, USAID, we built cold storage refrigeration. And, and again, um, I, I hope if I have another dream, it's to create an airline. I need that now because I don't need fruit rolling off the passenger seats. I'm thinking right now of Roots of Peace, R-O-U-T-E-S, because we need to get those planes in the sky, have this be the trusted across the world of renewing agriculture, peace through agriculture, again, to my dear friend, Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, but, um, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's turn those swords and those plowshares, those mines into vines, leave it to the experts on all levels, and the export in agricultural redevelopment is roots of peace. So, Tasha Kaur. I have to make a confession. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't until meeting you that I had a, a real appreciation for the Disney family because our office is up in the lower level of the main post chapel. And on the main post is the Disney Family Museum, which so graciously after our interfaith service and honoring you and Roots of, Roots for Peace, uh, Roots of Peace on the 20th anniversary, they hosted the gracious reception to help raise funds uh, for your incredible efforts. So for that, we are... 
and it, it truly the family roots, as you say. It was mm-hmm. Diane Disney Miller and and her dear husband Ron, who are both deceased. But um, uh, Joanna Miller, uh, their daughter, mm-hmm. one of seven children, uh, is the executive director of the Walt Disney Family Museum on the grounds of the beautiful renovated Presidio in San Francisco. And um, you know, San Francisco Presidio is a living example of turning swords into plowshares, where you can take a military fort and turn turn it into a Golden Gate uh, National uh, Beautiful Park. So I feel so blessed, uh, Michael, to know you, to uh, be born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, St. Francis, you know, uh, the gardener. Um, I, I, you know, Pacifica means peace. Um, let's take this spirit. It, you know, it's not going to come <laughs> from Washington, New York, traditional places. Let's bring those roots of peace back to the San Francisco Bay Area. And it's no longer, you know, a hippy dippy peace out. It is peace and love. And we need more peace and love in the world like never before. I'm hoping that your heart will be warmed. Each of us is coping with the COVID-19 in different ways. I've taken up gardening. And it, it, it has been just an incredible joy. And so I appreciate what you're doing in a very profound way right now. I am in the unenviable position of being the timekeeper here today. And our time has gone by so quickly. But I'd like to end with one last question. I'd like to end where your book starts. Um, and that is... Her Majesty Queen Noor wrote the foreword to your book with the passionate words, we are all daughters and sons of Abraham. Tell us about your efforts to work with multiple faiths as you seek to remove the remnants of war caused by landmines in both the soil and the soul. Mm Well, I, I, you know, I think we have many fat paths to the divine, and um, I think it is a time in our human history where we need to respect, as I say, the seeds we have in common rather than those which separate us. And on the back of my, the cover of my book, oh, I happen to have it here. Go figure. Um, is uh, is not only a quote from Speaker Nancy Pelosi, you know, a very, very esteemed uh, leader of the United States, Democrat but also Cindy McCain, a Republican. And that means so very much to me. Uh, Jane, uh, Pat, uh, Ambassador George Moose, Pat Mitchell, and uh, Jane Goodall for the animals. But at this time in, in American history, um, I hope we can put our swords down. I hope we can really come together as a nation, as a world, and, and to heal the wounds of war and to heal uh, the wounds of COVID-19. I'm living and breathing that and holding my breath and praying each day for my son and his beautiful wife, uh, who was also a physician, uh, with two children. We took care of our dear grandchildren because they couldn't come home with a two and five-year-old for risk of, of infecting the children. And we are on the uptick in the San Francisco Bay Area. So we need to lead with faith rather than fear in all faiths hold hands in the darkness. And when we come out of this COVID-19 global pandemic, may we have more compassion for one another and maybe not be so blind as to walk away from landmines. We've been given this beautiful earth to shepherd, Michael. You know, you're planting gardens. Let's plant global gardens. Let's respect and be true stewards of the land, not judge our politics, not judge our race, Regardless of the color of our hand, the politics in our mind, or the faith in our heart, a seed will grow as it has for thousands of years. So that's all I know. You continue to inspire me. And if my prayers mean anything, the prayer I have is that you can be strengthened and supported in your work uh, so that you can continue to save lives and transfigure the earth. Thanks to our distinguished speaker, Heidi Kuhn, founder and CEO of Roots of Peace, and author of the break uh, uh, of breaking ground from landmines to grapevines, one woman's mission to heal the world. Now, this meeting of the Commonwealth Club of California, celebrating over 116 years of enlightened discussion, is adjourned. <laughs>